Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics YouTube channel where we talk about using nootropics, nutrition, and biohacking to help you hack your brain and just build better thought thinking machinery. It's that easy. My name's Eric, the Holistic A-Hole, and in this video, I wanna talk all about brain fog and really the best way of using nutrition, nootropics, and biohacking to improve conditions of brain fog. Brain fog is, is really this condition that probably in the last 20 years has been more widely accepted as a, as a serious condition. I don't know if before 20 years ago people were really talking about brain fog. I don't know if before 10 years ago people were really talking about brain fog. I think brain fog for a long time has been diagnosed as depression, chronic fatigue, it's 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 a hard thing to really hammer down because it's not an actual medical diagnosis, but you do find it discussed in the medical literature. You see it discussed amongst functional medicine doctors and naturopaths and health coaches and mommy bloggers. And I, I find it to be more and more accepted, but still very misunderstood. A lot of people in the nootropic space try to get at brain fog from this myopic perspective where, well, if you have brain fog, then I'm gonna take something that's gonna help my neurotransmitters and help the connections in my brain, and that's gonna clear my brain fog. But really, brain fog is a, it's a symptom. It's a symptom of a more nefarious condition happening in your body. Brain fog is so prevalent in our modern society because it is a condition that comes from inflammation. It's really a symptom of, of inflammation of the brain. And so this is why it gets diagnosed as something like depression, because depression is also inflammation. And where does inflammation come from? Inflammation comes from the gut. When you have gut issues, something like IBS, colitis, maybe it just uh, could be digestive issues, it could be just, just kind of low-grade dysbiosis, you might eat something that triggers a food sensitivity, something like gluten or dairy or a nightshade, um, or even something like fish or meat can trigger these food sensitivities. Eggs are a big uh, food sensitivity trigger. Um, you know, there's a whole spectrum of food sensitivities out there, and when these food sensitivities get triggered, it could disrupt the homeostasis of your immune system, and then you get inflammation. And so essentially what happens is when you trigger enough inflammation, the uh, you start to experience this kind of leaky gut scenario, right? Gut per permeability where the tight junctions in your gut, the, uh, the tight junctions in your gut start to open a little bit. And this is something that happens, you know, all day, every day, this is a natural biological process, but it's when they stay open that you have problems because you know it's supposed to stay open, uh, your, your gut junctions open up to let in this, um, this stuff called zonulin, and zonulin is kind of like a gut lining cleaner, and what happens is, is some of these food sensitivities, they, they uh, trigger the gut lining to stay open. And when the gut lining stays open, this is when these food particles, these unbroken down food particles from incomplete digestion start to leak out into the bloodstream. The immune system attacks it. When the immune system attacks it, you start getting, uh, uh, there's a uh, communication system between the uh, between the tight junctions in your gut and the tight junctions in your blood-brain barrier. The uh, blood-brain barrier starts to uh, loosen up and all of these different substances and chemicals and uh, you know that you get in through your diet, through the environment, they go into your brain and this is where you start to get brain fog. So brain fog is strongly associated with gut permeability, with gut disorders. So if you start trying to get at brain fog only with nootropics, you're gonna start to, 
you're not going to accomplish a mission. Now, I know there's plenty of nootropics out there that do a great job of clearing up brain fog, at least temporarily. Um, you know, whether it's uh, aracetam, like phenylparacetam or paracetam, could be something like uh, lion's mane, could be an amino acid like L-theanine, something that really helps you, you know, tr uh, trigger your focus, clear up your uh, brain a little bit, get uh, start to uh, encourage these uh, more kind of alpha-focused brain waves. Uh, a choline supplement could be good. Um, but it's a, it's a short term fix and it's really more of a manipulation of the neurochemistry that, you know, doesn't really fix the underlying problem. Because if you are constantly having to take a nootropic to fix your brain fog, I mean, you're going to be going down this road forever. And at some point it's just not going to work anymore. You know, every one of these nootropics or these supplements, any substance that you take, any exogenous substance you take does have a point of diminishing returns. So what you have to do is you have to work to fix the underlying problem of your brain fog, which is your gut health. Now, as a as somebody who is a health coach, nothing drives me crazier than watching other health coaches post memes and preach about healing your gut. Like that's just such an easy thing to do. A lot of people will will hear this idea of healing your gut, and the first thing they do is is run out and go grab probiotics, which, uh, you know, I take a probiotic, but I'll I'll be the first to tell you that most probiotics on the market are are absolute hot garbage. Most probiotics on the market, you have to keep them in a refrigerator, and you know they have all of these colony-forming units, most of which don't even make it past your uh, past your stomach acid. Uh, and then the problem with that is, is people take these probiotics, they see that they're not working, or they don't even know what they're supposed to be looking for as far as effectiveness of a probiotic in the first place. You know, if you take a probiotic and you're like, "I'm still not pooping," this this stuff is bullshit then I can understand your frustration. Um, at the same time, you can't have something like constipation and just start pounding down probiotics and just expect to start pooping because that's also not the the end goal. I mean, the end goal is to, to poop more and have more more complete poops, but you know, there's, there's also other underlying things that you want out of a probiotic. And a probiotic can't work in the first place if you don't even have your digestion strong enough to break down whatever the capsule or the powder or the the liquid is that you're taking in that's supposed to be delivering the probiotics in the first place. The first thing you have to do is you have to really focus on complete digestion. I mean, you have to really focus on making sure that you are breaking down the food you eat up top, right? I'm talking about from the mouth down to the upper GI so that when you start breaking this food down, your gut knows how to deal with it. The problem is is so many people are eating food and eating highly toxic food that does not get broken down easily in the gut. You know, we're not chewing enough. We don't have the enzymes to break down food. People are eating in a very stressed out state. When you eat in a very stressed out state, when you're eating in a fight or flight state, your body is not making the appropriate enzymes or hydrochloric acid to fully break down food that you're eating. And this is where you start experiencing problems like heartburn, GERD, you know, you start experiencing ulcers and then eventually start experiencing gut problems like ulcerative colitis or IBS because after years of sending incomplete broken down food through your GI tract, you know, it starts to become a burden on your gut. You start messing, the, the, the good gut bacteria that's down there starts getting overtaken by the uh, more harmful gut bacteria that starts producing all of these different metabolites and all of these different chemicals that start breaking apart your gut lining, causing a leaky gut, which causes a leaky brain, and this is where you start getting the brain fog. So what you wanna do before you start trying to throw down probiotics and all these different herbs and you know all these different medicines to help your gut is you wanna focus on complete digestion from your mouth to the top of your GI. And the, the two biggest tips I can give you is to chew more completely, right? Because you have salivary amylase, you have an enzyme right in your mouth, saliva, that will break down carbohydrates, 
and make it easier for your stomach to break down the fats and the protein. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure you're eating in a very calm state. You don't, you don't want to eat rushed. You don't want to eat while feeling stressed out, okay? You have to deal with your stress. You have to really find a way to relax, you know? There's things you can do. You can do a quick breathing exercise. You can watch, a, you can listen to calming music. You can watch a calming video. You can, you know, don't eat while watching the news. Don't eat while scrolling through your social media. Don't eat while doing things that are going to stress you out. Eat in a calm state eat at a table, eat while sitting down, eat while having a conversation with somebody, a good conversation, not a stressful conversation. This will help activate all those internal inherent enzymes. Now, for support in this, there are there are products that can help. You can go with uh, with like a digestive enzyme. You know, I like to use Masszymes by Bio Optimizers. I'll put a link to my review of Masszymes in the description below. I also like to use digestive bitters like Urban Moonshine. You can find that on Amazon. I don't have a link to that, unfortunately. But um, you know, I kind of mix between the two. I like to use I like to use the Urban Moonshine bitters when I'm at home, when I'm eating something lighter, maybe like a lunch or uh, you know like a smoothie in the morning. If I'm eating something heavier, or if I'm going out where I know I'm going to eat something that's cooked in oils or is heavy in like the gluten and the carbohydrates and the fat, I'm going to take my uh, I'm going to take my Masszymes with me because I, I can travel with those and those are heavy duty and they break down the whole spectrum of foods. When you start getting here, then you can start messing with the probiotics, okay? So, you know, eventually, when you have a solid routine of, of focusing on the breakdown of food, focusing on your more fuller digestion, this is when you're going to start taking some of the burden of, uh, of uh, processing food and fully digesting food off of these more sensitive parts of your gut so that you can not have such a bad case of gut permeability, which leads to the leaky brain, leaky blood brain barrier, which eventually leads to the brain fog. And eventually, you know, over the course of a few months, if you stick to this protocol or you start uh, finding other protocols to mix into this, or you just keep it simple and just, just focus on the digestion, I would imagine your brain fog is going to start clearing up. Then what you can do is you can start putting those nootropics on top of it. So you can start using the lion's mane. You can start using uh, the, the racetams, right? You can start even, you know, if you're a modafinil user or whatever, um, although I try to stay away from like the smart drug promotion, whatever you're doing, you can start feeling more of an effect from the nootropics you're using. And that's really the most effective way to do this. So I'd love to know what you think. Are you a brain fog sufferer? Do you, are you interested in a holistic approach? Let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about this stuff, if you're interested in any kind of coaching, feel free to shoot me an email, eric at holisticnootropics.com, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.